Good Sunday morning. This is Kent Blaylock with SDG Bible Study. That's the Soli Deo Gloria Bible Study coming to you on this Sunday morning, the last day of April, April 30th, 2023. This morning we will continue in our reading of God's Word chronologically from the One Year Chronological Bible. We're going to be in selected readings in 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles and uh, one psalm this morning, Psalm chapter 7. So join me as we read God's Word together. If you hear that little small banging noise, we have a female cardinal that loves to peck on our windows. Uh, yeah, she seems like she wants to have her nest in our home. Oh, God's creation. We'll begin our reading this morning in 2 Samuel chapter 19, verses 31 through 43. Now Barzillai the Gileadite had come down from Rogilim, and he went on with the king to the Jordan to escort him over the Jordan. Barzillai was a very aged man, 80 years old. He had provided the king with food while he stayed at Maenaim, for he was a very wealthy man. And the king said to Barzillai, Come over with me, and I will provide for you with me in Jerusalem. But Bar Barzillai said to the king, How many years have I still to live that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? I am this day eighty years old. Can I discern what is pleasant and what is not? Can your servant taste what he eats or what he drinks? Can I listen to the voice of singing men and singing women? Why then should your servant be an added burden to my lord the king? Your servant will go a little way over the Jordan with the king. Why should the king repay me with such a reward? Please let your servant return, that I may die in my own city near the grave of my father and my mother. But here is your servant, Chimham. Let him go over with my lord the king, and do for him whatever seems good to you. And the king answered, Chimham shall go over with me, and I will do for him whatever seems good to you. And all that you desire of me, I will do for you. Then all the people went over the Jordan, and the king went over, and the king kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned to his own home. The king went on to Gilgal, and Chimham went on with him. All the people of Judah, and also half of the people of Israel, brought the king on his way. Then all the men of Israel came to the king and said to the king, Why have our brothers, the men of Judah, stolen you away and brought the king and his household over the Jordan and all David's men with him? All the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is our close relative. Why then are you angry over this matter? Have we eaten at all at the king's expense? Or has he given us any gift? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, we have ten shares in the king, and in David also we have more than you. Why then did you despise us? We Were we not the first to speak of bringing back our king? But the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. Second Samuel chapter 20. Now there happened to be a worthless man whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjaminite. And he blew the trumpet and said, We have no portion in David, and we have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tents, O Israel. So all the men of Israel withdrew from David and followed Sheba, the son of Bichri. But the men of Judah followed their king steadfastly from the Jordan to Jerusalem. And David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten concubines whom he had left to care for the house and put them in a house under guard and provided for them, but did not go in to them. So they were shut up until the day of their death, living as if in widowhood. Then the king said to Amasa, Call the men of Judah together to me within three days and be here yourself. So Amasa went to summon Judah, but he delayed beyond the set time that had been appointed him. 
And David said to Abishai, Now Sheba, the son of Bichri, will do us more harm than Absalom. Take your Lord's servants and pursue him, lest he get fortify himself to fortified cities and escape from us. And there went out after him Joab's men and the Kerithites and the Peleathites and all the mighty men. They went out from Jerusalem to pursue Sheba, the son of Bichri. When they were at the great stone that is in Gibeon, Amasa came to meet him. Now Joab was wearing a soldier's garment, and over it was a belt with a sword in its sheath fastened on his thigh. And as he went forward, it fell out. And Joab said to, to Amasa, Is it well with you, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him. But Amasa did not observe the sword that was in Joab's hand. So, at, so Joab struck him with it in the stomach and spilled his entrails to the ground without striking a second blow. And he died. Then jo, Joab and Abishai, his brother, pursued Sheba, the son of Bichri. And one of Joab's young men took his stand by Amasa and said, Whoever favors Joab, and whoever is for David, let him follow Joab. And Amasa lay wallowing in his blood in the highway, and anyone who came by seeing him stopped. And when the man saw that all the people stopped, he carried Amasa out of the highway into the field and threw a garment over him. When he was taken out of the highway, all the people went on after Joab to pursue Sheba, the son of Bichri. And Sheba passed through all the tribes of Israel to to Abel of Bethmeacah, and all the Bichrites assembled and followed him, in, followed him in. And all the men who were with Joab came and besieged him in Abel of Bethmeacah. They cast up a mound against the city, and it stood against the rampart, and they were battering the wall to throw it down. Then a wise woman called from the city, Listen, listen, tell Joab, come here that I may speak to you. And he came near her, and the woman said, Are you Joab? He answered, I am. Then she said to him, Listen to the words of your servant. He, and he answered, I am listening. Then she said, They used to say in former times, Let him but ask counsel at Abel. And so they settled a matter. I am one of those who are peaceable and faithful in Israel. You seek to destroy a city that is a mother in Israel. Why will you swallow up the heritage of the Lord? Joab answered, Far be it from me, far be it, that I should swallow up or destroy. That is not true. But a man of the hill country of Ephraim, called Sheba the son of Bichri, has lifted up his hand against King David. Give up him alone, and I will, and I will withdraw from the city. And the woman said to Joab, Behold, his head shall be thrown to you over the wall. Then the woman went to all the people in her wisdom, and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri, and threw it out to Joab. So he blew the trumpet, and they dispersed from the city, every man to his own home, and Joab returned to Jerusalem to the king. Now Joab was in the command of all the army of Israel, and Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was in command of the Kerithites and the Peleathites, and Adoram, who is in, was in charge of the forced labor, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Elihud, was a recorder, and Sheba was secondary. And Zadok and Abiathar were priests, and Ira the Jerite was also David's priest. Psalms chapter 7 A Shigion of David, which he sang to the Lord concerning the words of Cush, a Benjaminite. O Lord my God, in you do I take refuge. Save from me all my pursuers. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me. Lest like a lion that tear my soul apart, rending it in pieces with none to deliver. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there is wrong in my hands, if I have repaid my friend with evil or plundered my enemy without cause, let the enemy pursue my soul and overtake it and let him trample my life to the ground, and lay my glory in the dust. Selah. 
Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift up yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Awake for me. You have appointed a judgment. Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered about you. Over it return on high. The Lord judges the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to the integrity that is in me. O let the evil of the wicked come to an end, and may you establish the righteous, you who test the minds and hearts, O righteous God. My shield is with God, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge and a God who feels indignation every day. If a man does not repent, God will wet his sword. He has bent and readied his bow. He has prepared for him his deadly weapons, making his arrows fiery shafts. Behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. He makes a pit digging it out and falls into the hole that he has made. His mischief returns upon his own head and on his own skull his violence descends. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord, the Most High. Second Samuel chapter 21 Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year. When David sought the face of the Lord, and the Lord said, There is blood guilt on Saul and on his house, because he put the Gibeonites to death. So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the people of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites, although the people of Israel had sworn to spare them. Saul had sought to strike them down in his zeal for the people of Israel and Judah. And David said to the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you, and how shall I make atonement that you may bless the heritage of the Lord? The Gibeonites said to them, It is not a matter of silver or gold between us and Saul or his house, neither is it for us to put any man to death in Israel. And he said, What do you say that I shall do for you? They said to the king, the man who consumed us and planned to, and planned to destroy us so that we should have no place in all the territory of Israel, let seven of his sons be given to us so that we may hang them before the Lord at Gibeah of Saul, the chosen of the Lord. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Saul's son Jonathan, because of the oath of the Lord that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. The king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, whom she bore to Saul, Armani and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Merib, the daughter of Saul, whom she bore to Adriel, the son of Bazarli, the, Mah the Maholathite. And he gave them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them on the mountain before the Lord, and the seven of them perished together. They were put to death in the first days of harvest at the beginning of barley harvest. Then Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, took sackcloth and spread it for herself on the rock from the beginning of harvest until rain fell upon them from the heavens. And she did not allow the birds of the air to come upon them by day or the beasts of the field by night. When David was told that Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, the, the concubine of Saul, had had done. Oh, excuse me. When David was told what Rizpah, the daughter of Ai, the concubine of Saul, had done, David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of his son Jonathan from the men of Jabesh Gilead, who had stolen them from the public square of Bethshan, where the Philistines had hanged them on the day the Philistines killed Saul on Gilboa. And he brought up from there the bones of Saul and the bones of his son Jonathan. And they gathered the bones of those who were hanged, and they buried the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan in the land of Benjamin in Zelah, in the tomb of Kish, his father. And they did all that the king commanded, and after that God responded to the plea for the land. There was war between the Philistines and Israel, and David went down together with his servants, 
and they fought against the Philistines, and David grew weary. And Ishbenob, one of the descendants of the giants, whose spear weighed 300 shekels of bronze and who was armed with a new sword, thought to kill David. But Abishai, the son of Jeriah, came to his aid and attacked the Philistine and killed him. Then David's men swore to him, you shall, no longer, no, you shall no longer go out with us to battle, lest you quench the lamp of Israel. After this, there was again war with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibaka, the Hush, Hushathite, struck down Saph, who was one of the descendants of the giants. And there was again war with the Philistines at Gob. And Elhanan, Elhanan the son of Jer Orgerim, the Bethlehemite struck down Goliath Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was again war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature, who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in number, and he also was descended from the giants. And when he taunted Israel, Jonathan the son of Shemaiah, David's brother, struck him down. These four were descended from the giants in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David, and by the hand of his servants. First Chronicles chapter 20 verses 4 through 8. And after th this there arose war with the Philistines at Gezer. Then Sabiacah the Hush Hushathite struck down Scipia, who was one of the descendants of the giants, and the Philistines were subdued. And there was again war with the Philistines, and Elhanan the son of Jair struck down Lami, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was again war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, 24 in number, and he also was descended from the giants. And when he taunted Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, David's brother, struck him down. These were descended from the giants in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. And that's going to conclude our reading from God's Word this morning as we've read these selected readings in 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles and Psalms chapter 7. A lot of interesting things going on today in the life of Israel and Judah and in the life of King David. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope you'll be with God's people in God's house, worshiping our great God this morning. I hope you'll be somewhere where God's word is preached unapolog unapologetically and it is preached in spirit and in truth and God is worshiped in spirit and truth. Give him all the glory that he is due this morning. Soli Deo Glory.